Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at sprites. Uh, how exciting. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we'll have a look at sprites. We have a new section uh, called Interactive Animation right there. And it goes through what a sprite sheet is and sprites and simple examples of sprites there for us. As well as complicated examples where we're uh, moving in different directions with, well, this kind of stuff. Whoosh. So there's a sprite walking and changing directions and the sprite going to a, a shoot cycle, etc. So indeed, um, a complicated way. How do I get back? that down for now and um, uh, that's that's one example so definitely take a look there and there's some things that you can download but there's also um, what we'd like to look at now and we've just made some adjustments to it is under collections here in the examples we have the motion controller right there a motion controller example this was done a while back it's uh, quite sublime as the, the butterfly is farther away. It takes a while to fly across the screen and it's smaller. As it comes closer, it flies faster across the screen. And note we've got some uh, motion in the field there as well. So we've got lots going on here as well as different ways that we can um, run this thing. So there we are pressing down. When we press down, by the way, we're gonna to have to add the field to mouse down includes. We have a problem that if I go and press this button up here, I don't want the butterfly to fly up to the button. That was really annoying. So generally we we um, we have we force you to t take things that you do want to click on, for instance the field, and add them to mouse down includes. And we assume every everything else won't be won't move the butterfly on a press. Mouse moves different. You can wave around and still. Um, it will follow. There's also key down, gamepad, game stick, and swiping as well. But because there are so many options here, this makes this example, which is quite like a good example, but it makes it more complicated because we're handling all these different types. So what we've done is we've just simplified that and also brought it into uh, the latest version of Zim. So here it is. And Right now we're doing a very simple version, but we, we're going to go over in this in this explore. We're going to go over how we did that other complicated stuff, but just with only one type of one type of motion controller. So at the moment the butterfly is just animating, and you see how it just flips back and forth like that, flippity flippity flip. Let's take a look and see what that butterfly looks like. So here's the sprite sheet itself, and when it's flying to the left, it's the top row. And we just keep on repeating those frames right there to fly to the left. If we want to transition from the left to the right, then we play this row. Left goes to the center, and then it goes to the right. And from then on, we start playing the third row here, which is the butterfly flapping and flying to the right. If we want to transition from the right to the left, we play the last row, or these frames right here, and it goes back to the left. And then, once that's done, we start playing the left again. So we never jump right from going to the left to the right. We always trans play the right transitions, the, the correct transition. And that makes it a little bit tricky. All right, so that's what we want to look at today in this Explore. So here's the code. We're in the latest version of Zim, Zim 01. We're bringing in the butterfly in the field and they're just directly in the same folder. So let's see, that is in right here. So there's the sprite. The field is right there. The field is a bit wider than the stage in a sense. If you make it the same height as a the stage, there's a bit off to the left and a bit off to the right. And so we're gonna not parallax that, but kind of parallax it or whatever. We're just sort of shift it around as we move the mouse and we use a proportion damp for that. So I'll show you how to do that today too. And then there's the sprite sheet that we looked at earlier, which is called butterfly.png right here. 
So there we are bringing in the picture of the field and we're just centering it in this simple example. The complex example is commented out at the moment. Here we are bringing in the sprite and in the latest version of Zim, actually a patched version of the latest version of Zim, you can just put the name of the, the file right there. So in the olden days, we would bring in the asset using an asset function, a global asset function, and you might see many examples where we do that. Then we adjusted in, in Zim, um, Zim version Zim 00, I think it was, we went to a new pick like that. So we could say, give me a new pick of that. And then in our latest version, we said, hey, that's okay for sprites. If you just put in the name of the, the file, we'll, um, if that's a string, we'll assume, we'll go look for a pick. And that's all you have to do now. There are 10 columns in four rows, 10 columns, four rows. Not all sprites are like that. A lot of sprites have data. So go to that interactive animation and you can read all about it and see a good example with, with data as well, a JSON file that comes along that says how these are packed in. These butterflies though are perfectly aligned in columns and rows. So we can play them quite easily here by just saying how many columns, how many rows. We're centering the sprite and we're running it in a time of two seconds and we're looping. Uh, the run is very much like Zim Animate. So if you know how to use Animate, basically it's all the same stuff as Animate. There's just a few differences. Um, but for the most part, you can do what you, you want, just like you would with Animate. Um, great. If you want that to go, the butterfly to flap slower, then you can increase the speed there. If you want it to go faster, you could set it for one second, for instance, and then it will loop in one second. Do you want to see a fast butterfly? So we refresh here. There it is, first of all, flapping at the two seconds. And now, <laughs> it's a very fast butterfly. All right, so we just uh, take that into your own hands. If your sprite is going too fast or slow, just adjust the time on it uh, to, to get what you want. I think that looks fine that butterfly. Note that the butterfly is playing all of the frames though. So it's just going from the left to the right and with the transition and a, and a single like flap row basically. So that's not quite right because as we're moving along here sometimes the butterfly is flying backwards and it looks a little bit awkward. So uh, that's a simple flap. Um, sprite though, and we're passing it into a motion controller. There's the butterfly on mouse move. Once again, if you had nothing there, then uh, it would appear to be broken. So here I am pressing this. This should be mouse down by default. The thing is, it's the background that needs. We have to turn down my mouse or turn on mouse down include. So if we didn't have that picture here, now I press on the stage. The stage is fine. You see how it's pressing and going to the stage. But because the picture is there, um, we have to pass in the picture for mouse down includes, which uh, looks like this. I think it's target butterfly or object butterfly. I'm not sure which one it is. And then we go uh, mouse down includes, I can't remember if that's actually true or not <laughs> with the capital T. Most down includes um, the field. So we we store this in a variable. Const field is equal to and mouse down includes. You can pass in an array of a bunch of things or if you just have one, you can put the one. And let's uh, check that, yeah, okay. So there's the press is now working. We're, remember, we're still not changing the direction of the butterfly as it moves because this was the simple example, but just note that. All right, let's uh, undo and go back to how we were. And it's mouse down, all one word, lowercase, and then includes uppercase. However, we're doing it on mouse move. And let's have a look again at that. So now, once again, we're mouse moving, but it might be flying backwards. Okay, so let's move into the, the complicated part and go over that. So we'll comment out the simple. It will bring back the complex and you're kind of going, oh, look at all that code. Um, the complex has also code to move the field. 
and uh, to make the butterfly smaller and so a whole bunch of extra things. As a matter of fact, let, why don't we comment out the extra stuff? So this is extra here, including uh, the motion of the field. So I think this will still work, but just not moving the field and the butterfly. Butterfly should now fly to the left, fly to the right fly to the left. It takes a little bit of transition, depending on where it is, to convert, like to transfer over to the flying to the right, because we don't want it to jump. We want that transition to play. So it just sort of depends on where in the, um, where in the animation you start moving to the left. Sometimes it goes right away. Sometimes it just takes a little bit to finish its flapping. And that's fine. Okay. So that's better butterfly flying. <laughs> Butter, that's better butterflying. And let's have a look here. So this is the stuff. We've got a field. We're scaling the field uh, to the stage. So that's our stage S. Mm, I forgot our little message saying that we're given F for the frame, S for the stage, W for the stage width, and H for the stage height. Why don't we add that in here to this example? If we pop on out here to the Zim site, go to the code section, um, we're given these things. So we'll copy that and put them right up here in the top of the code so that we, anybody looking at this will remember that we have that. So there's, uh, we're scaling to the stage we're not scaling its X, but scaling its Y to 100%. And so that will fit it 100% into the stage. It might actually be the stage height. I, I can't remember for sure. And that means the widths are going to go off, but that's fine. And we're centering that to start. Um, we have a butterfly, which is a sprite. It's much the same as it was before, except this time we've set the animation. So let's have a look. The left flying. So you see that as a parameter, there's the image, here's the calls and the rows, and then an animations parameter, a squiggly brackets, uh, with a left of zero to nine. Those are the frames. Remember, it's got 10 frames, so zero to nine, <laughs> 10 frames. Uh, those are the first 10 frames flying left. Then we change from left to right, 10 to 19, the right is from 20 to 29, and the right to the left is from 30 to 39. Hey, that's quite simple, isn't it? Then when we run, we can just say run left, or run left right, or run right, etc. And um, that's a label, and it will run those and loop through those. We are centering the registration point at the bottom of the butterfly, which is just so that you see where my cursor is there. The butterfly is above it. If the butterfly is on the cursor, like centered, it's just kind of annoying. You're moving your cursor about and you're, when you pause, you can't see the full butterfly. It's underneath the cursor. So that's a bit of user experience that we're doing there. Um, it's a bad user experience to have the cursor in the way of the butterfly. As a matter of fact, for something like this, depends. If this were the character in your game, you'd probably hide the cursor, which isn't as easy as you think, but uh, you can do it with a style on the stage, I think, like a, uh, yeah, there's some way to change, hide the cursor. Okay, so, um, and we're starting the butterfly centered, so that's how she begins centered there. We bring the mouse in and it'll head on, head on over. So here is how we're handling the direction stuff. We are setting the last direction of left and a new direction of right. We're gonna we're, we're gonna sort of kickstart it. So note that when it comes in, it just kind of does this, goes from left to right kind of thing. Um, and then we're calling swap direction, which is here. And what swap direction does, it's hard to think when a butterfly is flying around. What swap direction does is anytime it needs to swap the direction, it's going to run this. So it runs the butterfly. The label is, uh, what is the label? Colon, it's all of this. Why did we have a label of that? Run label. 
I'm not sure why all of that is on in the label. Let me just think. Um, this is an array. So the array means that we're running a series. So it's going to do that first, and it's going to do this second right to there. So that's a series in the array. But the question is, is why are we saying run that label? Uh, let's have a look at the run of the sprite oh, in the docs. We'll see. It's an explorer. Woohoo! So docs and we look up sprite and spell sprite, right? So I'll go down to the parameters and we've got a label somewhere, I presume. Label. Okay, label. Default null. Pass in a label to stop on initially to play from a label, use run label value. Well, that sort that totally makes sense to run from a label. Did are, are we coming up with a label? Like, is there does this result in a label? It doesn't really result in a label, though. That's what I don't get. It results in a run function. I don't know why that's there, actually. Let's just get rid of it and run an array, which will run that, followed by that. And this extra bracket on there is the result of the loop callbacks. Okay, fine. And that's one thing. It's saying just run in time of four. It's given the label, but I don't think we need the label. Okay, let's try her out. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Um, obviously, it's stuck on something there. So that would be running this, and it says a label. Why do we need run from a label in that order? Huh. I don't know, there must be some deep meaning behind that. It's actually working. Usually, uh, this would be, if anything, it would be the props. Oh, there is no props. Okay. All right. So if this were Zim animate, so if this were animate, which we should, shouldn't do, then if we want to run a series like that, the series is put on the props. And then each of these is considered um, in order. But run doesn't have a prop. By default, it's the label. All right, that makes sense, I guess. Because let's let's just think about that. Let's have a look at the, the docs again. And the parameters of the run. Okay, so we want parameters of the run. Not parameters of the app, but parameters of the run. Time, label. Ah, so we were looking at the wrong thing. We were looking at the label of the sprite there. Which was, is it even here? Yeah, we were looking at the label of the sprite, but we are looking at the run itself. Run method animate sprite over amount of time. Label default null. A label specified sprite animation. If this is an array holding label objects, for instance, pop, 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 then the sprite will play the series with the time given for each. Okay, so that's what we're doing right there is we're running a series of labels as in um, the Zim animate series. Okay, well, that answers that question then. <laughs> Good to explore. Hopefully that made sense to you. Okay, so um, nice. And what we're doing is we're, we're spending point for running. Uh, this is the transition. So how we're doing, wh why we're doing two of these 
is we're always running the, when we swap direction, we're running the transition first, followed by, uh, in point five, we're looping through whatever direction. All right, so uh, the label is the new direction right there. And note that once we call, uh, so when every time we finish our loop, so we're looping, we're looping on this, say, flying to the right. We're looping, 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 looping. Every time we call the end of the loop, we're finding out if the new direction is not equal to the last direction. So we're setting the last direction here. So somewhere we have to change a new direction, and we'll see that later. It's down below here. It's in the motion controller when we move. Oh, when the motion controller changes direction, we're setting up um, a new direction based on that. So it's the motion con controller. We'll come back and take a look at that. So every time we finish looping, we're checking to see, is there a new direction? If there's not a new direction, it just keeps on looping that same one in whichever direction it's going. If there is a new direction, it recalls swap direction right here. So that means uh, when it swaps direction, we're running a different run. So the old run will be removed, I guess. Nowhere did I see, do we have to do that? I think with a sprite, if you rerun it, it just runs from, it, it, like it cancels the previous run and starts a new one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's do that again. We're setting up a purposeful difference right here so that when we come in to swap direction right here, we have the last direction, which is left, the new direction, which is right. And so we're running label left, right. Do you remember our labels? Left, right. So it's going to start off running those two, or running, not those two, the, that series of frames, from that frame to that frame. Great. Then once that's done, it runs this one and it starts looping at the new direction. So the new direction is going to be right. So we should see it come in facing left, facing left, and then animating to right, facing left, animating to right, facing left, animating to right, continue to animating to right until there's a new direction. In which case, uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so with our motion controller, every time the motion controller goes from left to right, it uh, calls it a change event, or it, it dispatches a change event. Here we are collecting it. We're saying, hey, when the motion controller is saying it's changing direction, call set direction. Here's the function set direction. We find out if the direction is to the right, then our new direction is to the right. I wonder, uh, we could probably have just said new direction is equal to e.dir. That might have been fine too, what do you think? New direction is equal to e.dir. New, oops, new dir is equal to e.dir. Would there be some time when the motion controller is changing direction? I don't think that that would ever happen changing direction and we're getting e dot dir the wrong direction like either something else up down uh, i don't i don't think so let's zog e dot direction and just make sure maybe it's up and down as well and we yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay totally that makes sense uh we're also possibly getting direction up and direction down so we only want to change left and right Okay, because the butterfly and the motion controller do go up and down as well. Okay, so new direction is right. So what? It changes there. We don't we don't swap right away. If we swap if we if we ran this right away, then we cut into potentially some the middle of some animation. So we're just letting this do it. We're letting every loop when we finish the loop, that's when we check to see if we need to to change direction. So as soon as the loop ends, if the new direction isn't the last direction, so if one of these has been set probably, then we're gonna swap direction. And what it does is it just calls this again, overwrites the last run with a new run, and does this whole thing again. 
And note that we've got a last direction of whatever it was, and we've got a new direction. So it plays the transition when it, when it runs this again, plays the transition, and then starts looping. So, mm, wow, that's nice. Uh, you don't see that kind of thing happening every day. That's a sort of a delayed reaction so that we don't interrupt the sprite um, cycle. Uh, we didn't do that in the shooting of this last sprite. Um, there, you know, there's a space guy walking around and he can shoot in the interactive animation version. And when we go to shoot, we just pop it right to the shoot. We don't actually transition it. You, you could hardly notice um, it all happens so quickly, we just place them into the, the shoot cycle. But if you did notice, you would have to do something in a transition like that. You would have to complete the walk cycle, and then if that's where the shoot cycle starts, you're good. But you, you can't... Another problem with shooting is you want to you want to shoot right away. You don't want to complete the walk cycle and then shoot. So we just jumped it right into the shoot, and you don't really notice. It's like the guy just is going really fast and shooting. With the butterfly flying, though, we want that we want that um, transition to be there because we've got it. We've got that transition. Let's use it, and that makes it look very realistic. All right, let's carry on in our explore. Hopefully you guys are doing well, yeah? In the Zim Explore. Uh, if you are liking it, make sure you come into zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord, ask any questions, uh, come say hi to us, uh, tell us what you're building, etc. And uh, remember, we've got all sorts of resources at Zim as well. We'd love to have you in talking with us, and we can help out as much as we can, like we have many, many people. All right, so the motion controller on mouse move, great, uh, that we talked about the change. So there we go. We've, uh, we've dealt with that fancy bit to be able to swap it going from left to right. All right, let's take a look at these extra things. So we'll have a look at this first one right here. Um, random fly, time out. Uh, if the motion controller is not moving in the X, then set the new direction equal to the last. If the last direction is right, set the new direction to left. This is just toggling the direction. So after a time out, random between one to eight seconds, call random fly. So this thing's calling itself all the time. And any time it calls itself, if I'm currently not moving, then just swap the direction. So right now, here's, here's what it looks like. I haven't refreshed yet. Um, so if I go to the right, it will stay to the right. See that? If I go to the left, it stays to the left. So even though I'm not moving, this butterfly seems quite intent to look that way forever. That's not exactly realistic. So here we are applying a little bit of AI. You know, this butterfly would probably pause and look around for a bit. <laughs> you know, if, we, if it's not following my finger, in a sense. So now we're going to refresh here. Refresh. And if I fly to, let's fly to the left. And now I hold. Oh, look at that. So now it's just sort of um, after a random between one to eight seconds. So here we're approaching the eight seconds, it looks like. But sometimes it will swap quickly like that. It was more like a four second swap. And on occasion, you'll see um, a kind of an instant swap. Let's wait until we see an instant swap, shall we? Uh, yeah, there we go. That's close enough to an instant swap. You see that? So it's kind of like randomly swapping back and forth, and that gives it a bit more realism. But only, only if the motion controller isn't moving. And I think the movement is uh, including the easing, so it takes a while for the butterfly to get there. That's considered uh, moving still, even though we're not moving the cursor at that time. Okay, so that's a little bit extra on what that is doing right there. And now we've got um, some extras relating to movement of other stuff. Let's bring all that back. 
So we're doing three different ones and we're using the proportion damp for each of these. Um, what that does, well, uh, this will change the size. Let's look at the size first. So we'll comment out these ones, these two, and we'll only do the scale, which is the last one there. So uh, what this is doing right right now, I, it ha it's not running. And take a look. When I go up to the top, the butterfly is still big. Butterfly is the same size. So basically, it's not doing anything there. But if I refresh, now the butterfly is big here at the bottom. But as I go to the top, the butterfly gets small. However, it's still going at the same speed across. Same speed across. It's always moving at the same speed. And that sort of looks, do you see that? Like, look at that butterfly. That should be going half the speed, at least. If it's half the size, it should be going half the speed, basically. That speed looks fine for here. But if I go up, it's, it's like whipping along. Caught in some wind stream. OK, so uh, how do we do that with the scale? At the moment, we're doing the scale only. We set up a proportion damp, and we're basically saying between zero up here at the top of the stage to the base max of the height. So from zero at the top of the stage to the height, we're going to apply um, a proportion that is uh, 0.5. So it will be half the scale at the top and a scale of one at the bottom. Do you want to see what it'd be like if it were a scale at two at the bottom and 0.5 at the top? Refresh. So there's there. Not bad, but we're scaling the sprite isn't the, the quality of the sprites not all that good. We're doubling it and I can kind of see yeah, it's a bit crappy. So I'd rather not do that. So we went from that to one rather than two. Like so. And then what we did is we said proportion the size immediately to wherever the butterfly's Y is. So when it starts in the center, that's um, assuming that it will be like starting in the center, it will be the right size kind of thing. And if we come on down here, we are saying set the butterfly scale to the proportion damp right there, proportion size convert based on the butterfly's Y. So the input is the butterfly's Y. All right, we're letting the motion controller control that. It's not our mouse. Our mouse is different. Our mouse, it, the butterfly hasn't gotten to the mouse. So we're actually using the butterfly's Y position to input into this proportion damp, not the mouse Y. Often we have the mouse Y or mouse X for that kind of thing. But uh, because the butterfly is taking a while to get there, because of the damping on the motion controller, we're using the actual position of the butterfly to convert this in, in each of these cases. All right, and that's how it's done. So basically, uh, the convert will um, do that proportion, but it's damped as well. So it, it is more smooth. It's not as jittery. Mind you, we've got damping on the butterfly motion anyway, so we'd probably be fine. We could probably have just used it a... Um, a proportion, so a new proportion here. And not bother damping. Let's have a look, see what happens. See if we notice any difference. Uh, first of all, I don't notice it getting smaller. <laughs> Do you? No, so I think it's, it's broken. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, there is no immediate function if you're not damping. Okay, so we do that. I think that would be fine. It's just the because we're damping the motion of the butterfly, we'd probably be fine without the um, without the proportion damp on that. But uh, we've used proportion damp. That's fine. Let's see if we notice a difference if we don't have that, just to try and show you what the difference is. So what happens is, uh, let's see, let's think about this. Sometimes the immediate is a tricky thing to think about. 
it's going to by default start at zero at the base min. So if we don't tell it uh, what the input is, it's possible that it's starting at zero, which means that it's going to be half the size. And then we'd see it like it would be half the size here and then all of a sudden animate and get bigger to be like, um, I guess three quarters of the size. <laughs> this is half the size up here. This is full size right here. One size, this is 1.5, 0.75. So we want it to start at a scale of 0.75, and that's what this will do for us. Start at the right scale rather than at the zero and animate to whatever the scale is. Um, anyway, don't worry too much about that. Uh, but if you see anything funny, it's a bit of a, a nuance, I guess. If you see anything funny at the beginning, then just think about this immediate thing or have a read in the docs as to what's, what that's doing. All right, let's try the speed. We'll just adjust the speed now too. And there's the speed. So for the speed, we're saying when, again, it's based on the Y. So again, it's based on the Y. We're starting at zero up here to H, the height down here. Um, have it be a speed of two up here and a speed of five down here. And anywhere in between, it will take the proportion of that and it will damp that value as well. Down here, we're then saying set the motion controller speed to the conversion of the um, proportion speed. So the convert will take the Y and pr proportion it. So if the Y is halfway, it will be a speed of two to three to four to five, uh, what's that? three and a half or something, okay? Which is halfway between two and five. Um, great. All right, and let's have a refresh here. Oh, save it, save it, and a refresh. Now, we should see it going at a normal speed across here. And then when we go up, already seeing it's going slower. Yeah, that's slower. And there's the butterfly making its way across the field in the distance. And usually we don't go across the whole field. We just kind of guide it around with the mouse. And that means it'll guide faster when it's closer and slower when it's far away. The last step, and I think the last thing that we have to look at today in this explore, how exciting, is um, the field itself. Set that there too. Here's the field itself. So the field is based on the width. So we're going from zero on the left to a base max of width on the right, W. And we're saying go from zero in, in the X of the field um, at the left. So why are we starting at the left yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, when our cursor is all the way at the left, we want the field to be at an X of zero. In other words, we want the field to be right at the left. When the, when the cursor is all the way at the right, we want the field to be moved over in the left by whatever the distance, the, whatever the stage width uh, minus, or well, the, the, the field's width minus the, the width. So basically, it's the width minus the field width. And that, that would be the width of the stage minus the width of the field, which is bigger. So it's gonna end up with a negative number over here. So when our cursor is at the edge, we actually move the field over a negative number, the difference there. So that, that makes it the field is right at its, its edge showing. <laughs> cool, okay, let's see it work. And so we'll bring back in here, and then we're changing the field's x based on the butterfly's x position. And we refresh here. And now we're getting that. See how I move over here? The field is moving to the left. Therefore, its x position is going to be negative over here. And if I move over to the right, or sorry, if I move over to the left, then the field should be at zero. We can easily check that, but let's set, set it. So when I'm over to the right, the field's X is 10. You ready? Here it is. I go over to the left. <laughs> uh, 
you see how the field's x position is 10? So basically when it's zero, it's just stopping right there. That's nice. And same with on that side, you know, something similar anyway. So, it's zero. so that's a little bit tricky conceptually, but this, this stuff actually makes it really easy. You don't have to do the calculations in behind. The, the calculations aren't too bad when you're starting at zeros. It's when you have a base min that isn't zero that you then start, you have to start off at the min and go from a different set the proportion based on the max minus the min. And that starts getting a little bit uh, tricky. Whereas this is nice and easy. Once you use the proportion damp and, and indeed proportion as well, a few times uh, you get quite used to it and it's relatively easy. I think there is now a JavaScript function called map or something which does something similar. It will map um, to a range, basically. It's, it's, this is cross multiplication that's happening here. But that's nice. It's a nice, easy touch to do to get this field uh, going. You could also do it in the height as well. If you had more things, you probably start applying parallax. As a, mat a matter of fact, guess what parallax is? Any guesses? Parallax in Zim, it's a class indeed, but it's basically a bunch of proportion damps. So every layer that you add is a proportion damp based on some input, usually the mouse X or mouse Y. So uh, there you go. And now we have a butterfly that's going in the direction of our cursor, the field moving. It goes slower uh, if it's farther away. It gets smaller when it's farther away. You could also decrease the alpha, maybe not the alpha, but perhaps the brightness of it or something like that uh, when it's farther away and then it looks like it dims out. It's kind of cool. All that, by the way, the speed, the speed of stuff back here, um, the size of it, the scale, and the alpha of it are all built into Zim Animate, which is pretty cool. So when you animate along a path, you've got, or actually anywhere, I think, You've got all of that stuff built into the properties of animation. As far as I know, we're the only framework that does that. Also, um, you've got, uh, you can animate based on any animation. You can animate based on any factor. So you can animate based on other animations. Uh, while that's called extra, Zim Extra. It was all introduced in Zim Neo. As a matter of fact, this was all introduced in Zim Neo 2, this um, sprite folder. Oh, it's in controller. Eh, no, maybe something else I was thinking of is all in Zim Neo, but it's about the same time. Okay, uh, that's excellent. This has been a Zim Explore, and I am Dr. Abstract here at Zim. So uh, come on into Zim and uh, hang out with us down at the bottom here. Whoosh. Down at the bottom here, you've got ways to, to contact us. Uh, we'd love to see you there as uh, Zim Explorer. Uh, right, so I'm Dr. Abstract. Cheers, have a great day or night. Bye-bye. <laughs>